Boston, also uh, the Foundation of Tech Sciences, the Free University of Brussels, um, and uh, writing for his PhD over there, and very great ambition of touring Europe at the moment, so happy to have him here. He's going to speak on bimodal interpretations of quantum mechanics, Mr. Bannon, classical reasoning by possible properties. So tell us, Chris. Okay, so this is a joint work together with Graciela Lorenz and Hector Freites. And we've been working on more interpretations now for a while. This title goes back to some papers of uh, Robert Clifton, who has a paper which is called Why All Interpretations of Quantum Mechanics Must Have Been Classical Reasoning About Properties. Now we are adding the possible part. So, let me go to the diagram of what will be the talk. So, I'll start talking about more interpretations and sketch a little bit some of the basic points of them. Then, the distinction which has been given by Laura Reuche. I don't know how you heard it. Reuche. Mm -hmm. Then we go into the distinction between actual properties and moral interpretation, the possible properties, and uh, go back to this distinction between a mis and mean, moral interpretations with semantic probabilities, moral interpretations with hidden variables, and discuss a little bit what might be the conclusion <coughs> of the general analysis we've been discussing. So, Small interpretations of quantum mechanics has a kind of very long history, it starts in the 70s, and it's I consider it to some extent as kind of a continuation of the analysis given by Niels Bohr, Donald Heisenberg, even Kaffee from Weizsäcker, and well, it's, it's even stated by Van Frassen himself, who calls it Copenhagen variant. And also in the version of Cochin, uh, there is a, also a paper of von Weizsäcker who claims that Cochin's interpretation is a continuation of, of uh, Heisenberg's and uh, Bohr's position. Then we have uh, versions of Professor Dix, who is in Nutrecht, and uh, Jeffrey Bohr gave a version on hidden variables. Then the extension to density operators. And in red are some problems which raised uh, regarding moral interpretations and had to so so, so moral interpretation had to deal with this kind of, of problem which we we go a little bit through. The atomic version of uh Bachagalupi and Dixon, and then several noble theorems which came after. So, what is a moral interpretation of, of this? I would not be so sure as to be completely convinced that there is a general scheme, because there are like two different groups which are kind of different, difficult to put all together within a general characterization, although it is claimed on the other side that this is done. So, this is kind of tricky. So I'm, uh, I'm already choosing sides here. So. But one of the strong points of moral interpretation is to stay close to quantum formalism, so not to add anything by hand, not to... There is a distinction between the state in Hilbert space and physical quantities, for example in comparisons between a dynamical value state in Dixon Vermas, between what they call mathematical and physical states. So there is this two levels of description regarding the possibility in the actual, I would say. Although, we will say this is kind of tricky, because then we have to say what is possible. It is no ignorance interpretation in the sense that when we have the state of the system, that is all there is to know, and we should not look for something, some more variables, hidden variables, which would give us more information about, about the state. It is a non-collapse uh, interpretation, so we stick 
the Schrodinger evolution to the state, and it continues through time. And the shift, of course, between possible and actual is just a, a kind of interpretation of it. And this is the point where the realistic flavor appears, which is the ascription of properties to systems at all times. And of course, it's the, the point which rises most of the problems because of the impossibility to define these ascriptions uh, directly in quantum mechanics. And it talks about individual systems, so it's not a kind of ensemble interpretation. We want to talk about systems and, uh, and be able to, to discuss, for example, superpositions, not in terms of the samples. So, the Koch and Dick's model interpretation, which is, I would say, the easiest to understand, is based on the Schmidt decomposition, on the so-called biotonal decomposition, which is a theory which tells us that if we have a pure state in a neighbor space, we can have a decomposition, and there are always exist orthonormal bases such that we can write this state in such a product where we have a, a single index. So we can then, of course, derive a the, the reduced density operators from this original state and they are one-to-one -one correlated which is kind of very important in order to provide this uh, interpretation then we can say alpha possibly possesses one of the properties and the actually possessed property so, what, so one of the systems will be the, system, the quantum system and the other one the operators and now we can say that the actual property A alpha K is determined by the observation of the device with the point of position R K. So this is the whole idea. Mm. Now this is the line of the so-called model interpretation with semantic probability, we call that. There is another line which appeared due to certain novel theorems and model interpretations, which is related to Buff and Bachagaluppi and Dixon's interpretation. Bachagaluppi and Dixon's is, is, is kind of clear what they have in mind, so let's compare them with Koch and Dixon to, to give a, a, an idea of what's going on. So they claim, we note that the idea of a preferred factorization is not, perhaps, as ad hoc as it might first appear. After all, assuming that the universe is really made of, say, electrons, quarks, and so on, it makes good sense to take these objects to be real constitutes of the universe. This is the variance of the properties that do not supervene on the properties of subsystems. So what they have in mind, I'll sketch the idea, is a preferred factorization. 